All right, so let's go ahead and check this one out here. First things first, no matter what problem we're doing, remember my party people, check out, hey, what's the question asking me to figure out? Keep things simple, because when you start reading the information, obviously, it might confuse you or it might make you assume certain things. So first things first, right here. At this rate, how long will it take Mary to earn $833.75? Okay, cool. If I look at the answer choices, I see that it says hours on all of these. Okay. So everyone, if you're here with me, is it fair to say that what we're looking for, what we want is the number of hours, blank hours, that will give us $833.75. To keep things simple, is that what we're looking for? The number of hours to get us to $833.75. Absolutely, right? Absolutely. Let's pause really quick because my question is, regardless of whether you think this question is easy or hard, are you prepared to answer more like this? Do you understand everything that you need to know leading up to this, like fractions, decimals, all of these questions that I'm asking you are legitimate questions that every successful ASVAB test taker needs to ask themselves. And so tracking your progress, guaranteeing that you know you're ready, that's the number one way to prepare. And that's why we designed our progress dashboards for the math basics, arithmetic reasoning, and math knowledge. No more do you have to guess and hope for the best in terms of, hey, I practiced for two days straight, I hope I'm ready. You know, that happens way too often and then people move on only to find out that they weren't ready and then time was wasted. So don't waste time. When you have a plan and a progress book like this that's lined up for you from beginning to end, you are absolutely 100% guaranteed to grow. So if you're happy about that or excited, go ahead and click the link in the description of this video or text me at 567-698-8867. Text me asking me about how the program works. I'm more than happy to take time out of my day to make sure that you're successful. So don't waste time. Let's make sure you get the score you want and that job you deserve. Hit me up, click the link in the description, and let's get you in there. So here's where we can identify what topic this is pretty quickly, almost instantaneously. When we go to step two here and look at what we have, when we write down our information, notice how in the question, we're looking for the number of hours that are related to a certain amount of money. Over here in the information given to us, look at how money and hours are again related. Anytime you see that, where you see that the same things are being compared in two separate sentences, that's a proportion full stop. So let me go ahead and write that down for you. This is unit two of your arithmetic reasoning course, and this is proportions. This is proportions, okay? So write that down for yourself. And hopefully you're able to identify that, but if not, no worries, let's go ahead and understand how we can identify that. Again, when the same things are being compared, that's when we know it's a proportion word problem. And everybody, if you're here live with me in the chat box, how do we treat proportions? What's the main idea that we operate under? Right on, Indy. Lewis, thank you. Compare the same things in the same way. Absolutely. So again, do yourself a favor. Write this down. Compare the same things in the same way. Right here. Nice and easy. So as long as we respect this main idea, we're gonna be fine, my party people. As long as you respect this idea, we're good. And I'm gonna show you how this applies. And again, if you wanna learn more about this, unit two is what you wanna write down in the arithmetic reasoning course that we have. Get in there and have a good time. So when I write down the information, I see that, hey, we're going from hours compared to money. So I'm gonna start with the hours. Four hours leads to $115, nice and easy. So again, compare the same things in the same way. That's really what we're going for here. So with that said, let's go ahead and understand how the proportion is gonna be set up. Again, it's gonna sound like I'm a broken record, but compare the same things in the same way. If we take a look at this first one here, my party people, we see that we are going for uh, blank hours. We don't know how many hours. So is it okay with you guys if I use the letter H for H hours? Cool, so we have H hours, that'll lead us to $833.75. So that's what I'll write here. H for hours, and in the denominator, I'll go ahead and write 
75. Next up, again, what we're going to do is compare the same things in the same way. So at the top over here, I had time. And at the bottom, I had money. So that's what I'll do. We have four hours here, so I'll put four up top for time. And then $115 for the money. Yes or no, does that make sense to you? Even if you're here brand new, not having had practice with this at all, does it make sense that the main idea here to get a proper setup, just compare the same things in the same way? So we wouldn't multiply money with money and hours with hours, is we would line up money with money and hours with hours. Yeah, we would line it up in the same way. So cool. So hopefully we're set up there. And again, if that didn't make too much sense, again, we have all of this um, remedial practice and, and lessons and everything you need to really get, a, get confident and engage with this unit two. But after we set up our proportions, everybody, here's what we need to really look at. Once we have the setup, it's, hey, how can we solve this as quickly as possible? So give me some ideas, guys. What's the main way that we typically uh, solve proportions? What's that one method? The main one that everybody's taught? What's the main way that we're taught? Yeah, typically it's, hey, let's cross multiply and divide, right? You know, if we went to school, typically that's what we're gonna hear. Cross multiply and then divide. Now, there are times where there's gonna be more that we can do. Give me one moment, guys. One second here. Obviously, Need to take a second to address that. All right, perfect. All right, so go ahead and drown out the chat. <laughs> so with that, go ahead and drown that out and we will be good. Yep, I know. So with that, boom. So, the way that we actually solve the proportion, it really doesn't matter, guys, because remember on the ASVAB, what we're trying to do is save time. We don't want to take all the time in the world to do one problem. So with that said, here's what we can do. Cross multiplying will get us to an answer eventually. Another way to do it is by, again, comparing the same things in the same way. So if we take a look here, everybody, I can compare the same way and be fine. So watch this, everybody. What's a, what's a good estimate that you might think of for going from 115 to 833. What number would you say is a good guess? It doesn't have to be super accurate, but what's something that would get you in the ballpark? Do you think times two, times three? What do you think? Times six, times five, times seven, times four. And even if you're looking at it straight up from just the biggest number you have here. So like, let's say from, instead of thinking of it as 115, let's just take a guess. Let's think of that as 100. Here we have 833. Just think of that as 800. Everybody, if we're going from the 100s to the 800s, what's the number that might pop into your head for multiplication purposes? What number might pop in? If I'm going, if I'm leading you that way, if I'm saying, hey, from the 100s to 800, from one to eight, I think we can say times eight would be the case. So just hear me out and watch how this might save you time. And the reason I'm even going to talk about this little technique that I'm going to show you is for the simple reason being that when you look at the answers, the answers are pretty spread out apart. They're pretty spread out apart. And that's going to give us a nice little advantage because if we're going to start guesstimating, we might be able to save time with a nice little guesstimation method. Here's what I mean. Right over here. Everybody, if I went times eight, would I be higher or lower than 833? What do you think? If I multiplied 115 by eight, do you think I'll be higher or lower? Yeah, a lot of us here are saying higher and that's absolutely true. Absolutely true. So with that said, everybody, what's four times eight again? This is how proportions work. In a nice little twisted way, as long as you're going in the same direction, you can do the same thing. So if I were to allegedly go times eight, just taking a little guesstimation, I'll get to 32, exactly. But what did we say over here at the bottom? We said that would be too high, right? That would be too high. 
We tried to get somewhat kind of close, but we said times eight would be too high. So that means that 32 would be too high. Which number is just below 32? Answer choice B. Answer choice B is right below 32. And by a, you know, by a very close margin compared to what else? 66, 41, 16 and a half. So it wouldn't be C or D automatically because those are higher. That would make no sense at all. But if you go to B, A or B, well, A, that's half of 32. Obviously not exactly half, but just about half. We're not that bad at estimating. B, 29, it's just below. Everybody, do you see how guesstimation, even if we don't have the exact, exact number, do you see how estimation can get us to a reasonable solution? Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right, so with that said, let me go ahead and show you the exact way to do it again, though. Let me show you the straightforward way. Again, the answer is B, and we just use a little guesstimation. Let me go ahead and show you with cross multiplication and division how this might take a little longer, but we'll still get to the same correct answer. Let me let these folks in. All right, cool. So let me go ahead and show you here. Right there. All right. Let's go ahead and cross multiply here, and we're going to go ahead and show h multiplied by 115. That'll just be 115h. I'm going to say that casually, like that's not going to haunt me in a couple of seconds. And then over here we have 833.75 times 4. Obviously, I'm not going to try to do that in my head. We're going to want to go ahead and write that out. So let's try that out here. 833.75 times 4. Multiply by 4 right there. 5 times 4, that's going to give us 20. 7 times 4, that'll give us 28. Carry the 2, that'll be 30. 3 times 4 is 12. Carry the 3 is 15. 3 times 4 is 12. Carry the 1 is 13. 8 times 4 is 32. Carry the 1 is 33. Boom. So we have all that going on. And everybody, once we do that, uh, what do we do with the decimals again? Right, we end up putting it back. Absolutely. We end up putting it back. So with that said, booyah, we're good. We have one, two decimal places back. Again, this is the way that will absolutely work. We just cross multiplied. So we can go ahead here and say three, 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 five. And now what we'll do is the second part of that, which is divide. Exactly. That's what we'll do now. We'll go ahead and divide. So with that, Right over here. What are we dividing both sides by again, everybody? What are we dividing both sides by? Yep, 115. So we'll go ahead and do that nice and easy. That's going to cancel that out on the left side. And then we're going to have H equals whatever that division is going to be. Now, in your opinion, is this something you're looking forward to? 3,335 divided by 115? Right, absolutely not. But don't worry, remember, this is a valid way to do it. But just remember that on the ASVAB, it does help to know more than one way to do something. It does open up some advantages for you. So even if you didn't know that estimation strategy that I just showed you, don't worry. I'm going to show you the correct answer, how we get it explicitly. And I'm going to double back to that estimation strategy and show you why, again, hey, if you know it, in this particular situation, it was beneficial. So let's do it. So we have 3,335 divided by 115. So let's set that up right over here. Okay, so let's play the guessing game. All right, everybody. So how many times does 115 go into uh, 3? None. 33? None. 333? How many times will 115 fit into 333? Here's where you got to know your division, right? You got to know how to divide on your feet. I'm going to say times two, because here's the thing. We can use a little bit of mental math and say, hey, 115 times two, 100 times two is 200, 15 times two is 30, so 230. Okay. If we added another 115, that would be 345. Too much. So two it is. So I'll go ahead and say, hey, so far we have two. And I'll go ahead and subtract 230. And that's going to give me three left over. 
or excuse me, my bad. We're gonna have 103 left over, and then we're gonna bring that five down. But here's the thing, my party people. Again, when it comes to the ASVAB, they're, it's better to take less time than more. And the reason I say that is because, everyone, quick question. Once I finish this division, is it true that I'll have the answer? Once I finish this division, is it true that I'll have the answer? And just take a look at the equation. We were looking for H. We set up our equation, and it looks like we're about to be ready to solve for H. This is going to give us the answer, everybody. This is going to give us the answer right here. Just take a look at the proof. We cross multiplied and then divided to get whatever H was. So we know that whatever solution is here, whatever we get as the quotient, that's going to be the answer. We don't need to take time guessing how many times 115 goes into 1035 when, if you take a look at the answer choices, what's the only answer that starts with a 2? B. So remember, everybody, the ASVAB is just as much about test taking strategy as it is about knowing how to do the actual problem. Because if you can kind of leverage the fact that, hey, these answer choices all start with different numbers, I don't have to torture myself and finish a calculation like this, like how most people would do and say, hey, I got to guess 115 times 8. Let me see if that'll work. 5 times 8, 0 carry the four, and then you start you know, messing around and hoping for the best. But if you look at the answer choices, it gives it to you. It's probably nine. Let's try out nine. Let's bring it over here. Let's do 115 times nine. That's 45. One times nine is nine. Carry the four is going to go ahead and be, what, 13. Great. Then one times nine is nine, and then carry the one is 10. 1035, 1035, and there we go. And we can take an effective guess in that way. So really quick, everybody, does using the answer choices in either way that I did, whether it was the first method or at the end of this really long division, does using the answer choices when it fits make sense to you? Okay. And remember, they're not going to put... Like some questions, the answers might be spread out apart. Some other questions, those, que those answers are really close together, like 8, 9, 10, and 11. You know, so there's going to be different situations where that might apply, where that might not apply. What I'm saying is pay attention. Because if they give you an advantage like that, take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. Now, there are plenty of other ways to solve this problem. But when you look at the other uh, things that I've taught you, if you're in my program, like going ahead and finding out what the relationship from 4 to 115 is or 115 to 833 is might not be the best case in that method because there's actually not a solid number that'll work. So that's why I did show first the guessing method, but then I went the traditional route with the cross multiplication and division. So where are we at right now with this problem? Do we understand that one, it's a proportion and two, do we also understand how to solve it once we set it up? How are we feeling? Hey, Kyle, thanks for sharing that. So if you did times seven, if you did 115 times seven, what you would have gotten, Kyle, would not have been uh, 833.75. You would have gotten something just below 833. And before you go, if you like what you saw and you want to raise your score with thousands of practice problems just like that, so you can lower that test anxiety, raise that confidence, go to this link right here to check out the full program. There's a video that shows you exactly how it works, but you're gonna get lessons, guided practice, worksheets, speed drills, and everything that you need to feel supported from day one all the way until you pass. Again, I'm Coach Anderson, and I'll see you soon.